one new series this year I'm looking forward to starting is entering the world of timekeeping and clock making. But before I start breaking down the day into miserable units of hours and minutes, I want to take a look at how we break down larger units of time using a different instrument, the calendar. Many early timekeeping methods were dependent on knowing the day of the year first, such as measuring the time at night using an astrolabe. Through history, calendars have been made in sync to a few different easily visible and measurable cycles. The cycle of the Earth around the Sun, which corresponds to the seasons, the cycle of the Moon around the Earth, which corresponds to the visible phases of the Moon, and the rotation of the Earth, which corresponds to the night and day cycle. And most calendars use a combination of these cycles to measure large durations of time. However, the big challenge is that none of these actually match up exactly. A lunar month is composed of roughly 29.53 days, but fluctuates from month to month in its exact amount. A solar year is composed of 365.24217 days, and over 12.36 lunar months. The Islamic calendar uses a strictly lunar calendar that measures each month starting from the first visible crescent phase of the moon after each new moon. Since the phases of the lunar month don't exactly align within a day, months can vary from 29 to 30 days long, producing a 12-month year that is either 254 or 255 days long. Since it's not based on a solar year, it has no correlation to the seasons of the year and is variably out of sync with solar-based calendars. Most calendars, however, attempt to stay in sync with a solar year, usually with the addition of what are called intercalary days. The Egyptians had a 12-month calendar, each with 30 days, and then an extra 5 days at the end. The Aztecs used 18 periods of 20 days, also with an extra 5 days at the end. Some calendars, like the Hebrew calendar, attempt to align the lunar and solar cycles by inserting a 13th month every second or third year. The modern Gregorian calendar uses an irregular number of days per month, which totals 365, and attempts to account for the uneven length of the solar year by inserting of an extra day every leap year, which occurs every year that is exactly divisible by 4, except for years that are exactly divisible by 100, unless they are exactly divisible by 400. Super simple. But even then, this modern calendar is still 26 seconds off each year. And by the year 4909, it will be off by one whole day. The length of a week, when the cycle of a year begins, and when the number of the year starts counting from, all vary from one cultural system to another and have changed throughout the years and tend to be more or less arbitrary. This should hopefully help give a little context as I move on to the next step of breaking down a day into miserable numbers. But that will be a whole other topic. To learn more about how the modern calendar came to be, why the moon was such a significant factor to schedule around, and an interview with a mathematician, check out the companion episode of our podcast, Simply Complex, available on Apple Podcasts and everywhere else you find podcasts.